Hi, my name is Sean Walker, and I'm a Principal Product Success Architect and part of the Ranger team here at ServiceNow. Today I'm going to be talking to you about creating software entitlements. So in today's video, we're going to do a, show you a quick definition of what a software entitlement is. Then we'll go through the different ways to create software entitlements, and then I'll do a demo on the different ways to create those entitlements. So what is a software entitlement? So software entitlements represent that point in time purchase of a right to use the software. So when you purchase an entitlement, you don't actually own the software itself. You're purchasing a right to use that software. Software entitlements refer to the asset itself and it represents the, the type, the quantity, the cost and the right to use. Um, software entitlements uh, can also be referred to as software licenses in a lot of cases. So software entitlements, they define the license details of purchased software. So it's important when you're gathering those entitlements that you capture details like the PPN, which is the publisher part number, the cost, the quantity, etc. They also track the licenses that you've been allocated um, to those users or systems. So allocating and allocating entitlements really helps the software asset manager validate that that user or that system is actually approved to use that entitlement. Um, software entitlements are associated with software models. So it's really important that you ensure the entitlement is associated with the correct software model. Um, incorrect or incorrectly configured software models can have a really big impact on your overall compliance position. Uh, entitlements are stored in the ALM license table, which can be a little bit confusing since there is another table named ALM entitlements, but that's where it's, uh, the system uses uh, to store those allocations of the entitlements. So there are several different ways to create entitlements in the software asset management workspace. The first is to use the guided walkthrough or the playbook experience. And this option is really great for those just getting it started out with software asset management because it takes you through step by step all the required information to, to properly create a software entitlement. The next is you can create individual entitlements using the standard entitlement form. So this is a great option for those who are more experienced SAM users and just want a quick entitlement uh, form to enter. And lastly, you can also use the bulk import process to import multiple entitlements at once. So this is great for those SAM users who are consolidating information directly from the publisher or their procurement data. So they've received like an invoice or they have a price sheet or uh, contract information and they wanna layer in say even hundreds of entitlements at once and bring them all in at the same time. I'm now going to do a demo of creating entitlements in bulk using the entitlement import feature in a Washington DC release of ServiceNow. So I've logged into ServiceNow and I've gone to the software asset workspace and now I'm going to take you through how to create entitlements in bulk. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is go to the license operations and go to my software entitlements. From here, I can get to the bulk entitlement import two different ways. I can go to either new and choose to import multiple entitlements from an Excel file, or I can go to import entitlements. And here's where I can go ahead and create a new bulk entitlement import. So to do this, I click on the new button. And the first thing you're going to want to do actually before you try and import, you don't want to just import any specific spreadsheet. You're going to want to download the template and you're going to want to populate this template specifically for uh, using your entitlement information. So you'd want to do this in bulk when you'd say, I'd say if you have anything over 10, maybe 15 kind of entitlements or more is where you want to look at hopefully using a template to to import your entitlements. So say you work with a reseller and you buy all your software through that reseller and you want to um, purchase 
uh, sorry, get a report from them on all of the entitlements you've purchased in the past year. That could be a really good way to do a bulk import from that report. But what you're going to want to do with that report is you're going to want to take the information and you're going to want to put it into the Excel template. And depending on what you have and what information you have, you're going to populate different fields. So what I'll do now is I will show you one of the templates that I've already manually populated for Camtasia and for Snagit. So I already know my publisher part numbers because they came on my invoice. So when you have the publisher part number, you don't need to put in the rest of this information because the publisher part number defines all of this. If you don't have a publisher part number available, you're going to have to put in the publisher information, the product information, version, edition, language, um, and you're going to have to put this information in because it's going to create the entitlement based off what you're putting here instead of what you're putting here. But in this case, I've got this publisher part number for Snagit version 2023. And really all I need to populate is um, maybe I want to apply a condition, but that's something you probably want to look at doing manually within the entitlement anyway. Um, you can put in your purchase date if you want. These types of entitlement, these types of columns here, for example, aren't really needed for this type of entitlement. So this template is a generic template that can be used for any type of entitlement. But this is this is TechSmith Snagit. It's not an SAP product. It's not a database. Um, it doesn't have units of consumption, etc. Because those are the types of those are entitlement fields. Um, for different types of entitlements. What I do need to put in though is my agreement type. And so you can think of it, if you were to go to the form and you were to manually create an entitlement, those fields that are mandatory on the form are gonna be mandatory here as well, right? So the agreement type you need to put in, uh, I like to put in the PO number because that way you can track that if you have it. You need to put in the license type. So I do need to specify that it is a perpetual plus maintenance. I have the option of specifying whether it's an unlimited license or not. In this case, they're not. I can put in my purchase rights. So how many of this software entitlement have I purchased? And I can put in the unit cost for those. So how much does each individual uh, software entitlement cost me? I need to specify my metric group. Again, that's a mandatory field. And I also need to specify my license metric. So I need to have, make sure these pieces of information are here for this specific license. Now, if I'm doing more complicated licensing, like say perhaps a SQL Server, right? And when you purchase a SQL Server entitlement, you purchase a two core pack. Right, so if I, this was a SQL Server license, I may have to put in that I have two core, it's a two cores in each pack and I'm purchasing 10 packs rather than a total quantity of purchase rights. So these are some of the things that unless you get right, you're gonna get entitlement import errors that you're gonna have to resolve during the import process. Um, so you have to go through each and every one. So I'd suggest that if you're doing bulk imports, you do them for a specific product. So say I have, you know, as I said, 100 line items from my VAR on this, on this report. Let's maybe break down the entitlement template. So I'm only bringing in the TechSmith at one time. I'm only bringing in the SQL Server at one time. I'm only bringing in the Windows Server or Adobe at one time and not bringing in too many, because if you bring in thousands of entitlements, the odds are you're gonna have a lot of errors, right, in your import template that you're going to have to resolve before those entitlements get created. So I would highly recommend breaking down your, your big reports, your big chunks of entitlement into smaller pieces so that you can manage the entitlement import errors uh, a little bit more streamlined. Um, since these are perpetual plus maintenance agreements for Snagit and, and Camtasia, I need to put in my start and end dates 
for that because that's going to be a mandatory field because it's a perpetual plus maintenance entitlement. And then again, I can track um, all of the uh, entitlement, um, uh, sorry, I can, I can track all of the rest of the things that we saw on or we see when we create manually or create for the guided playbook experience. So I'm just putting in some, um, some generic um, asset tags here so we can see the difference in my instance once we go back and import these. You can see the difference between the asset tags and which ones came in via bulk which should be versus which ones are already there. So I'm not going to track any of these other pieces of information because I don't really care who owns it, which company location, etc. In this case, it's just a pretty generic entitlement I'm doing on the bulk. So I do need to close this template now. I need to save it. And now on the entitlement import screen, I can go ahead and attach that file that I, I saved. So that was the TechSmith entitlement import that I was working on. So I can go ahead and click on that. That's going to attach the file to the entitlement import. I can give it a different name if I want, but in this case, this is a pretty good name because I named my template that way. And I'm going to go ahead and hit import. And so what it's going to do is it's going to bring in the data into a temporary staging table, and then it's going to try and transform the data into the entitlement table. And it's going to give you a little status here. Now, because this has only got two entitlements on it, and they're pretty generic, I don't actually have any errors on this entitlement import. We can see the status is completed. Number of rows processed is two. Number of rows successful is two. And number of rows with errors is zero. So that's really, really, really good for me that I don't have any errors. Um, but again, you're going to, that takes practice to get to get it good at in, entering your entitlement templates and populating them properly so you don't get any errors. So we can go ahead here now and we can see that, yep, it's created these two uh, entitlements for us. There's those asset tags I added in with the publisher part numbers, with the metric group, all the license type, our purchase right, our total cost, and it's automatically put those into a state of in use for us. So that's how you go ahead about um, downloading the bulk import template, populating it and importing it uh, with no errors. Um, and just to show you, if you did have errors and need to circle back them, you can actually come right here which is your entitlement import errors. And you can go ahead and start processing through them through the entitlement error, import error section of the license operations. So that finishes the demo on bulk importing uh, entitlements. So in this video, we defined what software entitlements are. We discussed the different methods that those entitlements can be created. And I did a demo on creating those entitlements using the entitlement import feature. So we created them in bulk. For more information on this topic, you can go to the ServiceNow product documentation site and search for create entitlements and workspace. And you'll be able to find lots of relevant information on what we just covered in this video. In addition, you can go to YouTube, the ServiceNow community page, and look for the playlist, Ask a Ranger Software Asset Management. And here's where we have the videos for gathering and creating software entitlements, creating entitlements using that guided playbook experience, creating those software entitlements manually, and this video, which is bulk creating the software entitlements on the, via the entitlement import feature. I hope you found this video helpful, and I'll talk to you in the next one.